Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and it's time for another update. Now, back in 2018, I covered the Kamaya Mobley story, which is a story of a young girl who was kidnapped from birth, raised for 17 years with her kidnapper, and then finally finds out that her mom, who she thought was her mom, wasn't really her mom. Now, I have an update to this story, but before I give you guys the update on how Kamaya and the kidnapper are actually asking for a judge to get a sentence reduction and giving you guys all of the details on that. I'm going to give you a quick recap of the videos that I previously reported on this. I'm going to edit it down to the key points and then I'm going to give you guys the update right after that because the judge was like, I, 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 you're going to sit your kidnapping tail self down. Now, y'all know that I recently did the video of the girl who faked her um, pregnancy and she faked the whole gender reveal. Well, this is the next step for cuckoo birds who go the extra mile. Now, I feel like the woman is absolutely insane for doing that. But when I reported my video, I was focused more on having more compassion for Kamaya, being that her circumstances had abruptly changed. Her whole life was changed before her eyes. And I had a little bit more compassion for her, being that I've seen so many people in the blogs and in the comments of when this first happened. They were tearing her down left and right and saying a lot of mean and cruel things. So I was rather focused more on being more compassionate to Kamaya. But the woman who did this is absolutely bat-ish crazy, and she deserves all the time that she gets in jail so don't get that confused but here is my previous reporting wait 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 before I show y'all I just was reflecting on like dang it's really been five years that I have jumped back in this gig I started in 2008 came back around town in 2017 at the end and then you know this was like one of the very very beginnings of my like YouTube YouTubing so it's crazy to look back on it but anyways enough about that Let, let's roll it Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're watching Neek at Night. Tonight, I'm going to give you a review on Ayanla Fix My Life, the Kamaya Mobley story where she was abducted at birth and raised by a woman who raised her as her mother but wasn't her mother. This was actually a requested video, and I decided to watch Ayanla Fix My Life. I don't normally watch Ayanla. When I do catch her episodes, I almost always feel like she doesn't fix their lives. So I'm not really a fan of the show, but I decided to watch this since someone asked me to cover it and get my thoughts on it. The episode starts off by saying that Kamaya was eight hours old when she was abducted by a woman by the name of Gloria. Gloria took her from her birth mother and raised her as her own. Tonight, the heartwarming images of a family reunited. 18 years after being kidnapped, a smiling daughter, her biological father full of gratitude. Charles Manigo says his then girlfriend, Gloria Williams, told him she gave birth to their daughter while he was away. Manigo and Williams raised her from the time she was a newborn, sharing custody after they split up in 2003. DNA testing uncovering the truth. Alexis was in fact baby Kamaya, snatched from a Florida hospital in 1998. Manigo and Alexis now dealing with the shocking news. <laughs> Tonight, 51-year-old Williams is behind bars facing charges for the kidnapping. Police say she posed as a nurse and snuck the newborn out of the hospital, starting a frantic search. It wasn't until Kamaya was, I want to say she said 16 and applied for her first job, where her the woman who raised her broke down crying because Kamaya needed a birth certificate. And obviously, the woman could not provide that for her. And at that moment, she told her that she wasn't her real mom. She named Kamaya Alexis and, uh, and she raised her as Alexis. And Kamaya Alexis, she confided in one of her friends and told one of her friends that she was abducted. It didn't say if the friend that she told was the one who told authorities or how the mother ended up the mom who raised her ended up in jail, but I'm just going to take a guess that maybe the friend told somebody. I don't know. It's a bit of a challenge. Gloria was my main support. Even though it was wrong, I had been with her for 19 years. It's just the comfort is kind of gone now. And a lot of people in the comments, they were like, how can she love this woman? This is all she knows. 
This woman, even though this woman took her from birth, which was absolutely wrong. I'm not saying anything. There was nothing right about her taking her. But when you have to put yourself in Kamaya's shoes, this is the only person that she knows she loves. This is the family that she knows. She was raised with this woman from birth. She loved this woman. This woman took good care of her. And from her perspective, she was an amazing woman. She was her support system. She was her everything. She is ripped from the environment that she knew and grew to love and be comforted in her entire life. This woman is, you know, I'm sure, you know, when she's hurt, when she's sad, this woman is the woman who she went to. So for, and it said that she was found in 2017. We're barely in 2018 and we're at the beginning of 2018. So this is all new. So fast forward to, I want to say when she turned 19, she got reunited with her birth family. The story kind of broke out. The woman who kidnapped her was arrested and the domino effect has been happening ever since. Um, it was not a smooth transition her meeting her birth parents because she had an alliance and a loyalty to the woman who raised her because that's all she knew. So within that being said, her birth mother, like I said, she didn't have it easy and it wasn't an easy transition because Kamaya sort of had this resentment towards her mother because her mother wanted to put away the kidnapper who stole her and they haven't had a good bond. Kamaya was very, very, very angry with her biological mother because her biological mother went up and testified against Gloria for kidnapping her. And Kamaya was furious. She did not like that about her biological mother. And she just wasn't having it. She was not here for it. Let me give you guys a clip of when the mother testified. And then I'm going to show you what the mama said about her wishing that Kamaya never entered back into her life after that. Authorities gave Kamaya a chance to say goodbye to the only woman she ever knew as mom. They would meet again in the courtroom one and a half years later. Okay, as you've seen there, Kamaya was devastated when she had to say goodbye for now to her kidnapper, and she was furious that her mom was up next to testify. Now, when her mom went on the stand to testify, she wished that Gloria was put to death. And Kamaya, feeling like this is my mom, this is the only person I know, she was very angry at her mother for trying to do such a thing to the woman that had raised her. It's only one sentence and I don't think she's open up for that. I would say death. She stunned everyone when she said the death penalty. Alexis's biological father also took the stand, echoing her mom that the community always viewed them with suspicion. Every day up until they found Kamaya, we was, to me, a suspect. It doesn't heal now. I'm still hurting. When you just you, you reaching out to my child, that is my child. I am your mother, Kamaya. You, I am your mother. Did you feel that the sheriff's office and or the greater community was blaming you, was looking at you as everybody, the person? Everybody, everybody. I was harassed. The kidnapper, Gloria Williams, sat mostly expressionless as Mobley testified, occasionally wiping her eyes. Do you recommend the maximum sentence that the court can give? Oh, of course. Okay. Because I need her away from my child. I wish you could do a no contact order too. Because if I got, if I, if me and my child relationship could get along, I need her away, a far away where she cannot contact my baby. Well, my baby can't even get to her. Um all right, so as you can see, that was the mother's testimony. The father, he also testified. And again, this is coverage that I did four years ago back in 2018. Now, currently, after she was sentenced to 18 years, they are now or they did ask for a sentence reduction. And again, I'm going to give you guys all the details to that in a bit. But let me finish breaking down and giving you guys a recap on the dynamic between Alexis slash Kamaya and her biological mother. So as you see there, the mother wished that she'd be put to death, which she knew that that wasn't really a possibility. In turn, she then said that she wanted her to get the max 
sentence, period. Well, Kamaya was very livid, like I said, because she did not want to be separated from her kidnapper because she felt like that was all she knew. To which the lawyer ended up releasing a statement. So now let me input more clips of my previous coverage. And then, like I said, I'll be back with the update. Mobley's attorney, Justin Bamberg, said in a statement, Kamaya is now processing what it means for the woman she's known as her mother to receive an 18-year prison sentence, he said. However, she understands Gloria had to be held accountable for her actions. She also understands that her biological parents have the absolute right to view today as a joyous day. We can only ask that everyone respect her privacy, give her time to take things in, and continue to pray for the well-being of each and every person whose life has been touched by this almost 20-year chain of events. It's going to take years and years of therapy to get her to a point of acceptance and realizing and unraveling you know how wrong the woman was how she's not her mom how you know like that takes time that was 19 years of her life with this woman she's still 19 years old Okay, and like I said previously, the biological mother, she just could not understand why Kamaya was still attached to the kidnapper, and she just could not grasp it, and she was very angry and furious. So her mother did an interview where she expressed how she wished that she never even came forward. She wished that this never even happened. She wished that the reuniting and them finding out that she was alive and them, you know, their lives being disrupted and their lives changed as they knew it and, and what they thought. Um, She talked about that. I don't have a relationship with my child. Right now, speaking as this woman. And honestly, I wish sometimes she would have never came back. And it takes a toll on my other children. My daughter is going to the 10th grade where she has to argue with people to defend her mother. This is what Gloria and Kamaya brought upon my children. And I truly really feel the mom. I just wish she would have never came back. I really do. Seeing her mother express her feelings in that way is truly heartbreaking. And nobody wins in this situation. Everybody loses, period. And no, I'm not celebrating Kamaya's 20th birthday. This is the second Mother's Day. I didn't get a text. I didn't get a call. I didn't get a card. Nothing. So no, I'm not celebrating her 20th birthday. All right. A lot of you guys have heard about this story, but for the ones who hadn't, I wanted to kind of bring you guys full circle up to speed. And even the ones who know about this story, just to give you guys a refresher about the specifics and some of the details. Now, also in this story, there was even a conspiracy as to whether the birth mother and the um, kidnapper came in cahoot to try and collect on settlement money. Now, there was a settlement for Kamaya being stolen at birth. And then there was going to be another lump sum that she was going to get once she turned 18 years old. So there was people who even had a conspiracy because before Kamaya and this story came forward, Kamaya revealed that she had found her biological mother's phone number and called her. Now, when Kamaya talked about it, she said she called the mom hung answered and then hung up or whatever. And so from that, like people started to speculate as to whether they kind of came in cahoots to collect these other monies now I'm um, as furious as the mom was I don't think that she ever came in cahoots with her but I'm just going to give you guys a snippet of my previous reporting again and then I'm going to uh, share with you guys the update finally after that and we now know Shannara Mobley received about eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars after all of her legal fees were paid once the hospital then gave her this settlement. Now, it was set to be paid out monthly over 20 years. But in 2002, when Mobley was just 20 years old, she sold a large part of her stake in the settlement in order to get a lump sum payout. We know she got $437,000 and she paid the other half Yes, another 437000 to this third party in order to get the cash up front. But we do know there was another lump sum of $300,000 to be paid out on baby Kamaya's 18th birthday if she was alive 
and if her DNA could be proven. So there was conspiracies of people saying that they felt like the birth mother and the kidnapper were in cahoots because now that she's 18, she's supposed to be awarded this, you know, lump sum of money. And now, you know, it's revealed that, you know, she was kidnapped and the story is unfolding and she's coming forward and, you know, things like that. I don't believe for one second that they were in cahoots or anything of that nature. But, you know, the Internet has a way of digging up a conspiracy theory about just about anything. Thing. Um, I think it's completely bonkers. The mom was definitely devastated when the daughter was taken away from her at a young age. And, you know, this is something that has been going on for 18 years. Now we're up at, you know, 20 years now in 2018 of, you know, still turmoil and things like that and she still doesn't have a relationship with her child because her child resents her for putting away the woman who kidnapped her all right so now we're all caught up to speed so we got our refreshers some details maybe even the people who heard about this story before maybe i added in some stuff that maybe you didn't see before and we're kind of all caught up on what i previously reported and things like that now let's get into this update so Kamaya's kidnapper, she decided to try to put in a motion to get her sentence reduced. So she has been behind bars and she is saying to the courts like, look, I have been a model citizen. I have been doing good and I'd like to get out of jail early. I want to spend nine years behind bars and then I want to spend the other nine years on probation. To which the judge said, girl, bye, sit your behind down. Do not pass go and do not collect $200. You're not getting out of jail, period. So let me read to you guys what they submitted to the court and even Kamaya's new letter on the behalf of her kidnapper to try to get her kidnapper out of jail. Let me go to the PDF and read through it with y'all. Okay, so this is the document that was submitted to the courts. This is page three of the motion for modification of her sentence. I'm just going to skip down to page three and read to you guys from this point. If you guys want to see the whole thing, it's available online. But it says, uh, through my time and experience here, it has shown me the importance in giving back to people less fortunate than myself. I realized what the devil meant for bad. God is turning it around for his good. As for my daughter, Kamaya, now she's still calling the girl her daughter now, child. Ain't your daughter. I mean, you raised her as your daughter. And I understand Kamaya feeling an attachment to you and still referencing you as her mother. But you got to reference her as the girl that I kidnapped and stole. Okay? Stop. Don't try. My daughter. No. You didn't give birth to her. You stole her. Okay? Now, again, I got compassion for Kamaya because Kamaya, you're all she knew. But you knew from day one you was wrong and you kidnapped and stole her. So don't be writing these courts talking about from my daughter. Anyways, let me start back. <laughs> let me start back from the top. So she says, through my time and experiences here, it has shown me the importance in giving back to people less fortunate than myself. I realized what the devil meant for bad. God is turning it around for his good. As for my daughter, Kamaya, and the rest of my family, friends, and community, they are all still very supportive of me. Kamaya is still a part of my life, as is expressed in a letter she wrote attached. And I always want to do what is in her best interest. Well, the mama already told you when she testified last time that the best interest of Kamaya was for you to let her go and get out of her life. But I understand for Kamaya, that might not be an easy thing. But for you, girl, I don't know. So anyways, so it says, however, for the sake of Kamaya's relationship with her biological family, I have tried to keep a little distance from her in order to give her the space and time needed to grow with her other family. I wanted to give her the opportunity to build and establish a relationship with her biological mother. What I see happening is Kamaya is bringing her biological family to South Carolina to introduce them and to spend time with my mother, her Nana, her sisters, nieces, and nephews. So what she's saying is, you know, at first, 
where I showed you guys the clip of the mom being very angry and not wanting to even deal with Kamaya. Now it looks like four years later, the mom is kind of, you know, coming to terms with the reality of the situation. And what the kidnapper is saying is that Kamaya is even, you know, bringing the two families together, the kidnapped family and the biological family. And she goes on to say, um, everyone is coming together to give Kamaya the best of both worlds. Uh, everyone, okay, the best of both worlds and to bring her life into fulfillment. I believe the Lord is moving in her and bringing everyone together to be the family she wants, needs, and deserves. I have a myriad of responsibilities when I go home, but I just want to take care of my family and to once be a productive member of society. I understand that I was sentenced to a prison term of 18 years. However, I have been a model inmate, which is evidenced by my institutional record. I have received no disciplinary reports whatsoever, and I have maintained an above satisfactory rating by both security in my work assignment performance issued once a month by the Department of Corrections. I understand that this is in no way mollifies my actions. However, I ask this court for the mercy and grace in considering modifying slash reducing my sentence to a split sentence of nine years department corrections to be followed by a term of nine years um, felony probation. I can and will adhere to any stipulations and or conditions that the court deems appropriate. So that is what she sent in for her modification. That is page three of it. Like I said, it's like seven page document. And the judge said, girl, you did not even file this on time. And had you even filed this on time, I still would have said no, because I don't see why you feel like you need to get out early. You stole that girl, baby. And you raised her for 18 years like nothing ever happened. And no, absolutely not. Goodbye. And the judge probably also read it too. like you. You referring to her like my daughter, this my daughter, that like, no, that's say the girl that I took from her biological mother, like say that. You know, I'm sure the judge probably was like, girl, bye. So, you know, that is the update on that. The judge said you are denied and she has her sentence reduction revoked. OK, it's not going to happen. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to update you guys on the new goings on that's going on with this story as this just recently came out of this modification being rejected and just kind of, you know, refresh you guys memory on this story, especially because not too long ago, I just showed y'all how a girl faked the whole gender reveal. And this right here is a real life tale of what happens when people go a step further and just just craziness it's just pure craziness so hopefully um kamaya slash alexis is getting the healing and therapy that she needs like i said in my previous reporting she is going to have to have a lot a lot of extensive therapy oh wait i forgot to read you guys the uh letter that kamaya uh wrote darn it i was about to exit on out of here and forget to read y'all what kamaya said all right, so this is what Kamaya wrote. She said, to whom it may concern. My name is Kamaya Mobley. I am writing this letter in support of my mother, Gloria Williams. I would like to make it very clear that she is my mother. She raised me and not only provided for my needs, but she loved me unconditionally. I had a well-rounded life and I am an independent, college-educated, and deeply spiritual person. Because of all my mom gave, I am fully aware of how lives came to be, what they are, and how my mom came to be my mom. I have met my birth parents, and I am grateful to have met my birth parents, and I am grateful to have a second family in my life, especially to have siblings. I understand that uh, I guess none of this uh, eliminates the truth um, of the past, nor does it justify my mom's actions in any way. However, at the end of the day, I love my mother and I wholeheartedly support her. I ask for the court's grace and mercy as I need my mother home. 
signed Kamaya Mobley. Okay. So this is the letter that she wrote on behalf of her kidnapper. And she was telling the judge, like, listen, this is my mom. You know, I'm grateful that, you know, I do have a second family, but this is my mom. This is my family. And I need her back home. You know, and to that, like I said, the judge said, no, 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 no. She's staying behind bars. She's not going to pass go. She's not going to collect two hundred dollars. And it is what it is. You know, unfortunately for Kamaya, I know she's attached to her. And again, I have a lot of empathy for her because, you know, I like to try to put myself in people's shoes in certain situations. And for this to be the only person that she knows for 19 years and the only family that she knew and then to just get thrown into a whole new family that she doesn't really feel that much of connection with. I can I know how that battle is very, very hard, but I'm glad that she is able to try to make her reality work by trying to blend the kidnapped family and the biological family um, and whatnot. But um, yeah, so that's that on that. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys on the next video. And um, I'm going to be looking through my old stories to see if there's any more updates on things that I need to update. But it just so happened that I was just looking on the Internet and seeing this one. I'm like, wait a minute. I covered that four years ago. Let me do the update. <laughs> So, yeah, that's that on that. Those of you guys who know the spiel at the end, y'all know I'm going to plug my website every time. I do have a website, www.neekatnight.com, spelled exactly like my channel. Look in the description below for the link to my website. And you can find all types of goodies on my site, like pajamas, lingerie, adult goodies. I got some restocks. I got more stuff coming in. Your girl is just about to really go hard, period, 2022. So stay tuned. But in the meantime, check out my website. Oh, and I finally opened up a Patreon, okay? <laughs> I finally opened up a Patreon and figured out a way that I want to, you know, structure my content to put stuff exclusively over there. So, you know, I be having, like, receipts sometimes to stories that I just don't post because, like, you know, sometimes YouTube is too sensitive. Sometimes Instagram could be too sensitive. So I don't know. Maybe I'll test it out with Patreon, and we'll see how that gig goes. So, yes, I finally opened up a Patreon, and I do have my website, so check my website out as well, www.neekatnight.com, spelled exactly like my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video.